quit writing about Frank Bascom. Yes, in fact, one of the last, I think the last time we talked about Frank Bascom, you had sort of said you were not going to talk about Frank And Bascom. I meant it, You're too. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> but being a novelist, I don't have to, I don't have to stay true to my word. Right. It's all made up, right? Exactly. So I made that up. So, yeah. but then uh, Christina, my wife, and I went down to South, uh, well, to Jersey, on the Jersey Shore, and after Hurricane Sandy, mm -hmm. and on the way back from Hurricane Sandy, I started again, sort of writing lines in my notebook in my head. And when I got home, I thought, gosh, these are all Frank Bascom lines, and they're, they're about the hurricane, and Jersey is his turf anyway. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could write something. Mm -hmm. So I did. Sandy was, was a, is a presence throughout these stories. Yes. But I was struck by how um, a restrained presence it is. It's, not, it's always sort of held a little bit back. Yes. Is that purposeful? It's purposeful insofar as I was interested in writing about the consequences of the hurricane, not just the the wind and the, and the sea itself. And in mm -hmm. fact, the wind and the sea are, are rather pacific, really, now in, mm -hmm. in this book, mm -hmm. um, although it's the Atlantic. But <laughs> it's the yeah. Pacific it, Atlantic. It's the Pacific Atlantic. Yeah. It's quiet. It's calm, yeah. anyway. Yeah. So um, no, but, but I thought the media had done that well enough. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to write about things that I thought the media would miss. Mm -hmm. You know, human, the human cost of, and not even the cost, necessarily, just the human consequence of mm -hmm. having your house blown away, of, of having to be trans planted to some place, even temporarily. I wanted to know what people did and thought about. So I have, so for me, that's the province of the imagination. The first three books were novels. Yes. Full length stories. Some of them, quite full length. Quite full length. <laughs> 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 I won't go there. Well, we don't even have to go but, there. But this is, this is for linked stories. Right. Short novellas, right. I guess. How did it come, why did it come out this way? Was it a different process of, of writing no, or envisioning the stories? If you think that art is the daughter of time, which is what Francis Bacon said it was, this was just the time to write novellas to me because I didn't really have, I didn't really have the chops to sit down and write a 200,000 word novel because I was just off my book tour from Canada, which was a long book tour, happy. But I thought, I, I just don't have what it takes the to. Cho the chops means like physically, physically, I didn't want to sit down. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't have, yeah, the, I didn't have yeah. whatever it takes to write a yeah. 200,000. But I did, I thought, have what it takes to write uh, four 16,000 word novellas. And novellas are nice links, un unless you're a publisher in America, in which case you don't know what to do with it. But so I thought I'd put them all together. There, there was an issue, right? Of a, there, well, there, there wasn't an issue about the novellas themselves. They were, my publisher Echo was quite happy to publish novellas. Yeah, yeah. There was a little bit of issue about the, about the title. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was a genius title, of course. But there was some, as I think the expression is, and th there was some pushback on, uh -huh. on the title. Uh -huh. But there was, some, there was some pushback on Canada, too. Yeah. For any young writers who ever hear this, stick to your guns. Stick with it, right? Yeah, because if you ask the marketing department, as goodwilled and as ingenious as they are about selling books, to title your book, yeah. they're not going to come up with as good a title as you're going to come up with. Uh -huh. Well, in any case, it's your book, so you want it to be titled what you want. There is that. Yeah. There is that issue. Well, read a little bit for us, okay, I will. just to get some flavor here. I'll be glad to. This is a little bit about about the Jersey suburbs. Um, um, as Frank drives through them in the dark, though out here now, all is frankly enigma. Probably it's my age, which explains more and more about me, like a master decryption code. In New Jersey. We've now built to the edge of the last million acres of remotely developable land. We're on track to use it up by mid-century. Property taxes are capped, but no one wants to sell since no one wants to buy, all of which keeps prices high but values low. Householders of many of these expensive piles are now renting their 8,000-foot trophy villas to Rutgers students with rich parents, taking the long view about upkeep and wear and tear when the lease comes up. Frank is um, 68. 68. I was once 68. You were once. <laughs> <laughs> you but will be 68. Yeah, I will be. Um, and I hope you're around when, 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 when I When you are? Yeah. Not a chance. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, but, but, but tracking Frank um, in that kind of internal yeah. monologue. Yeah. Um, is that how it comes out for you? Pretty much. Yeah. You just make it up. You know, yeah. novels are made up things. Yeah. And uh, frankly speaking, I'm oh, sorry. But they're constructed uh, things. Yes, sometimes they are. Because you're trying to write something that the reader will find useful. Yeah. And at the same time, felicitous and amuse the reader and interest the reader about something serious. This is a book, this book is, is a comic book. Yeah. But it's about 
not very comic things. Well, it's a growing old, right? In part, remembering mm, things. Yeah. Yeah. The, the former wife is in a is in an old folks' home. I mean, right. there's the the old friend who's dying. I mean, yeah. it, and you say it's a funny book. I wanted to call it hilarity. That's really? I, I mean, I mean, you know, if you can't laugh at getting old and getting closer to death, what you're gonna do? Cry? Mm -hmm. It won't do you any good. So mm -hmm. I just thought laughing is the laughing is the remedy. Laughing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hilarity is the remedy. I probably should have called it hilarity. It would have made everybody happier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we have talked before about the different voice, the different places yeah. that you've lived and that you write about. And last time we talked was about Canada, and that was that Western voice. Right. Do these voices come out? They come out differently for you. They do. Yeah. And, but you know, in everybody's head, there are all kinds of. Yeah. Writers just have something to do with those many voices. I mean, you think about the way you talk to your wife, you talk to your doctor, you talk to your priest if you have one. You talk to people with different vocabularies, you talk to di people with different rhetorical purposes, mm -hmm. and that's what different novels are, do, mm -hmm. from voice to voice to mm -hmm. voice. And, y and you hear them that way, but earlier you said you, you, you were write. writing F.B. F.B., yeah, yeah, Frank Bascom, yeah. for that voice. If I l Here's a line that I think I could easily dedicate to him. Something he thinks, something he says, something about what he does. So yeah. do you have a notebook full of uh, these kinds of, yeah? I do, I do. And they're all stored away in my freezer, in the freezer compartment of my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled out how often? Well, when I get ready to write something. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. haul them all out. They're probably, now there's probably about 40 of them. I'll get them, if I, uh, over the last five or eight years, I'll get them out and read them all, see what's in there, see if there's anything that I remember as being uh, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since, because we do know each other a bit, uh, I can ask you this. Yes, you um, can. Um, as long as I don't have to answer. Right, but I mean, the, 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 at this stage of your life, writing, how important is it to you? I mean, where does it, in the, all that you want to do now, and all that you have done, how do you see writing today? To me, it's, it's still quite important whether I do it or not, because I think uh, whether, you do whether I do it or not, because literature has, has a use. And, and, and also, I, I'm, I, I love language. There's a wonderful line of Dennis Donahue who says, language is where we most compellingly find values, moral values, social values, political values, in action. Mm -hmm. And so for me, to use language is to, is to engage all those moral values, social values, political values. And mm -hmm. so, but I mean, you and I do it when we talk. To do it on the page is different and requires a different habit, but for me, language is what's of value. Mm -hmm. That's what I care most about. Mm -hmm. And speaking to um, to the reader, to the audience, absolutely. It, yeah. You know, if I didn't think that this book had a readership, yeah. I'm sure I wouldn't have written it. I mean, I might have, I might not have done that if I was 25 years old or 30 years old when I didn't have a readership. Mm -hmm. But at this stage in my life, I have to think to myself: there are people who read my books. There are people who will read these books. I have to do the best I possibly can. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when you travel around to places like this and meet those readers? Yeah. It's a joy. It it's is. It's a joy because what we have in common is books. Yeah. My book is just, a, it's just, it's just a little Bitcoin here of, 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 our, of our getting together. But we care about books. We care about literature. But you've been doing this over now a, a span of time in which 4,000 years. 4,000 years, in which the book <laughs> right. has changed quite a bit, Yes, right? it has. Yeah, <laughs> On those yes. stone tablets, you yeah, were first oh, yeah. carving out. God, what suitcases we had Two then. different kind of tablets. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I mean, are you, are you sanguine about the, the state of reading and, and books these days? As, I mean, I know you're meeting people who love books and who love reading, the special but in group. the larger culture, are, how, do you, how do you see the place of the novel or the... I think I think that there is a, 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 a permanent appetite for the kinds of um, rewards and uses that imaginative literature gives to its readership. So I'm extremely sanguine about that. Whether or not it's going to come out in this kind of a package, right. ultimately, I don't know. But you don't want to stand in the way of progress about these things. These things are driven by market forces that will ultimately relegate this to be a, an antiquarian's preoccupation. You just said market forces and progress in the same sentence. You I don't know. Did I say that? You did. No. Well, I think that that's what basically drives progress for the most part. It's not, it's not moral forces per se. Moral forces come along and judge progress after the fact. All right. Good place to leave it. Let me be frank with you, Richard Ford. Thanks so much. Thank you. As always.